Tyranny essentially is a story about an individual, smart kid, goes to college, gets a double master's degree when he graduates in, uh, in, in the types of things you would apply towards guidance systems on missiles. And he gets a job with a defense contractor and he's shipped overseas where he works as support staff maintaining firmware for trajectory guidance, blah, 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 on missiles. Um, but while he's over in the Middle East, he sees this. He sees the absolute damage of war, you know, what, what war really does, you know, to the lower middle class. And um, he sees enough to know that the company he's working for, the contractor he's working for, is supplying arms to just everybody. And everybody just wants to shoot everybody else. And it's about war for sale. So he starts looking into it, uncovers classified documents, so on and so forth. He gets fired, leaves his job, um, comes back, gets an apartment in New York City, sets up shop as an, as an internet kind of hacker kind of guy, starts doing research um, and becoming an elite computer hacker. He winds up uh, becoming very depressed because the America, the world that he thought he lived in, was not the America and the world that he thought he lived in. Um, and he, has, he suffers an emotional breakdown, um, which he comes back out of upon the death of his father. He meets a girl on the internet and develops a, develops a relationship with this woman. And uh, she evidently has a past somewhat like his. Um, kind of a cast away from the system, so to speak. He falls in love with her through, you know, spending a whole lot of time on the internet with her. And she evidently has done something that she feels the government is after her, and she doesn't want to endanger him, so she avoids, you know, the relationship coming together and meeting with him, so on and so forth. So what he does is, um, as an elite computer hacker, he plants a virus in the World Financial Transactions core computer in Belgium. Um, and uh, as soon as that is discovered, the banking system sends guys after him and it, it turns into a cross-country chase. Anyway, he makes arrangements to meet her at a discreet location that she points to him and can, he convinces her, you know, look, now I've done something bad and it's okay, I don't care, let's get together. So they agree to meet and it's in Alaska. And he is on foot and hitchhikes across the United States, up through Canada, winds up, uh, winds up coming into Alaska. That's where tyranny ends. His female counterpart being chased across the country as she comes to Alaska and it literally, the story literally picks up eight hours later. She's a bioengineer at a large pharmaceutical company. She works in a level four containment lab. An Israeli Mossad agent has got a terrorist brand seed of smallpox, weaponized smallpox, and delivers it to this pharmaceutical company. Her job is to go to genome and extract a formula for it. What is the biggest possible bioterror that's out there? She was working on this serum. Nobody was able to come up with a, a serum that worked. And it just so happens that uh, she began doing uh, advanced blood work. She was experimenting with her own blood. She's a very rare blood type. She successfully develops a serum. She stumbles on secret documentation that, in essence, says that the pharmaceutical company was planning a limited release upon development of the serum in isolated pockets of the world. Suddenly, they have the serum 
their stock goes through the roof, they make a whole lot of money. She codes the serum formula into unused junk portions of the smallpox virus and gives herself a shot. She inoculates herself. She actually alters them the serum, destroys the seed, and she takes off. The song Vow, they fall in love, decide to get married on the spot, and they, what do you do once you're married? You know, she gets pregnant. Um, but she's got the pox virus living inside of her. She gives birth, she passes away. Torn, um, a song we had originally written for one of James LeBree's solo records, uh, which he wound up not using, was absolutely elated to get back, uh, is about father's plight. She was kidnapped. He decides to go look for her. He packs up and he starts hiking, not knowing where he's going to go. And as he's hiking, he's going through the fog, he's going through a clearing, and there he sees in front of him, it's a U.S. Special Forces. The Archer of Ben Salem uh, is about a Green Beret who has been sent to find this guy, um, and they are part of a faction of the U.S. military that has broken off from their chain of command because they discovered um, a plot where the New World Order wants to bring about the rise of the New World Order through a global smallpox release. They were able to obtain some of the daughter's blood from the rogue Mossad agent and from that create a serum to fight against the smallpox outbreak. The uh, daughter, now having been kidnapped, now in the hands of the New World Order, um, which was the real reason for developing the serum in the first place so they could control it and bring it back under control after the outbreak occurred. Um, now that the New World Order has her, they now have what they need to go forward with their plans. This Green Beret gets this guy knowing that he is an elite computer hacker and uh, and very good working with encryption technology and they've come up with a plan where they want to distribute um, the serum through channels that are not typical and would not be monitored. They have the band Shadow Gallery and they take the genome and the serum, the information needed to create the serum and they place it on one of Shadow Gallery's records, Tyranny, and they take the encryption key and they put that on the Room 5 CD. You take those two disks and synchronize them and it spits out a stream of data when reassembled is the serum formula, the instructions for creating it. They've enlisted the band Shadow Gallery as the music component of that distribution method. And using record companies' distribution channels to distribute it worldwide um, and never using 
traditional means for letting people know, just the lyrics of the song. Here we are, we're the band, we've got your marching orders. Let's sing the music and the words that we say. The archer Ben Salem takes him to this to this library where they have this good computer system set up and he goes through the exercises of encrypting all this data. After it's encrypted, the Archer Ben Salem takes the discs, takes them back to the studio where Shadow Gallery is finishing the record, and they take the music, they embed all the data in the streams of those two CDs, which get released, and uh, the hero of the story just walks off in search of his, his daughter. Looking at probably a release in April. Be a safe guess. Okay. So we're, we're mastering in <laughs> January first. January twenty seventh. January twenty seventh. <laughs> so we got a couple more months to go. Yeah. But I'm sure anybody that's familiar with us knows that we take a million years between records. At least three. At least three. <laughs> At least three million. Yeah.